I'm Libby Smith, a speech language pathologist with Holland Hospital here with me. And Libby, we've been talking about long COVID and I understand that Holland Hospital offers um, some sort of long COVID programs. Can you talk a little bit about what um, your involvement is in that program? Absolutely. I am, as you said, a speech language pathologist um, and I work primarily with people who have changes to their thinking after COVID. Um, so a lot of times it'll be problems with memory or attention or organizing information. Um, a lot of people tell me they have brain fog. Um, so that's a really, really common complaint. And I primarily work with that population in finding ways that they can improve all of those areas to get through their daily lives and try to find ways that they can use strategies in their daily lives to help themselves get back to their life and what they want to do and what they need to do. Um, so I've had people that are continuing to work, I've had people that are retired and just want to be social again and they have a busy schedule and they need to manage it. Um, so yeah, some people have chronic cough, voice and breathing changes that persist for a, quite a while. So you might see that and we can work on um, ways to improve breathing and um, get rid of that lingering cough. When you're working with someone um, experiencing some of these symptoms, what does um, that program sort of look like for you? Obviously it's different considering the symptoms, but what are some of the exercises or um, sort of things that you would you would work with them on? Yeah, that's a good point. So we make a make an effort to tailor each program to the individual person because not everyone is going to have the same experience with long COVID. Um, I like to get a really good background of the patient. So what are their responsibilities? What are their hobbies? And what are the things that they need to be able to do? And when we have that kind of base, then we talk about different strategies for memory and attention. Um, we kind of collaborate, like myself and the patient, on what are the ways that they can return to those activities. And a lot of times it's modeling whatever that would be in the therapy room, because the best practice for what you wanna do is doing that. Um, we in speech therapy have kind of deviated from what we used to do, which is like a lot of brain games and different ways to like stimulate thinking. A lot of the research nowadays is not supporting that in terms of helping with returning function like memory and attention. You get better doing the thing that you need to do. So whether it's like I want to get better at um, remembering my schedule or being able to organize information for my kids' soccer games, that's the thing that we want to do um, and really find a better way to do that as opposed to giving somebody a game to do that wouldn't really improve their life. I like to see people maybe one time a week. Um, so it's really low commitment in terms of what I like to do because the best thing that the patient can do is like go out, use the things that we talk about and get back into seeing me in like as a consultation kind of thing. Um, so it's low commitment and I think the benefits that you would get from having somebody who has seen a lot of patients with COVID and seen kind of the way that it can improve their life, um, that would just be helpful in their, in their recovery because you don't need to do things alone. Libby, I understand that you all have a collaborative approach to patient care. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so it is. Um, it starts with our care coordinator, Barb, who is the person that you would deal with throughout the process. So it makes it easy to just have one person that you're communicating with about your schedule and about maybe an order that you would need from a doctor's office. So you don't have to do this all by yourself, this coordination of um, how you're gonna see all the therapists. So she is um, great. We've had her at Holland Hospital for years now, and she helps with, like I said, the coordination of the visits. So oftentimes people see 
more than one therapist in a day. Like you might see physical therapy, speech therapy, or occupational therapy. And we like to make sure, number one, those scheduled visits are at times that work for you. And then number two, you're efficient with your time and you get all three of them done maybe in a day or if it works better to do two in a day. Um, so she is in charge of fitting all those puzzle pieces together. And the other nice thing um, is that she also leads our team meetings that we do once a week. So we talk about um, where we're at with therapy for each specific person that's getting um, that collaborative care. And we can talk about, you know, if they're having trouble in a specific area, just, just thinking about ways that maybe um, a different therapist would be able to shed light on what we can do differently or how we can improve the way that they're um, going through our program. Um, the other nice thing too is we are able to communicate with the doctors really easily through email or telephone calls so they're involved in the process as well. Can you just talk about the importance of seeking help or what, what that might look like? Yeah, I think people tend to live with things a lot longer than they need to. I think people put up with a lot and especially with COVID and long COVID, it's just a new issue that we haven't dealt with before so nobody really has an idea of maybe the course of the disease or the, the ramifications and how long they should last. And my opinion is don't let yourself suffer needlessly because there's a lot of things that we can do to help get somebody back into their life and feeling more like themselves. Um, so I would say talking to your doctor when you notice problems and letting them kind of steer you in the direction of, yeah, this is something that speech therapy could help with or physical therapy could help with um, and letting them know as opposed to just suffering silently. Thank you, Evie. Yeah.